water. Each day, hundreds of thousands of acre feet flow from the mountains of the west through an intricate system of streams and rivers to the oceans. For the natural systems that depend upon it and the people who use it, water is the national forest's most important resource. To effectively manage this vital resource, it's necessary to understand the hydrography, flow patterns, and hydrologic processes that form and maintain rivers and streams. In this program, we'll focus on one important stage in the flow pattern of a river or stream, the bankful stage. We'll define bankful stage and discuss the importance of bankful discharge. We'll demonstrate how to consistently estimate or identify bankful levels using available data and indicators in the field. Finally, we'll briefly touch on various applications of bankful determination in design, construction, planning, and resource management. Uh, standing on the shores of the New Fork near Boulder, Wyoming, is a good place to start talking about bankful discharge, bankful stage, how to determine what it is, how to identify it, and what is its importance. The bankful condition is important because the bankful is defined as the stage at which water starts to flow over the floodplain. And when water flows over the floodplain, then is by definition a flood. And when man builds structures on the floodplain and water exceeds the level of the floodplain, then flood damage occurs. So the first thing to, to recognize about the bankful stage is that it is the stage in which the water is about to flow over the floodplain. And therefore, it's important to be able to identify the floodplain because it defines the bankful stage. One of the reasons we're interested in the bankful stage is not only that the water flowing over the floodplain causes a flood by definition, but it also is the stage of the river where the most work is done. Over time, the largest amount of sediment over a long period of time is carried by discharges at or close to bank full. Bankful stage, then, is the stage at which the processes of sediment transport and deposition are most active in forming the channel. Bankful discharge is one indicator of the flow required to maintain the river channel. It's also an indicator of flows required to maintain riparian ecosystems and is used in many fish habitat inventories. Consistent methods for determining bankful stage and discharge provide data useful for the development of channel maintenance in-stream flow hydrographs. Knowledge of bankful stage is important for the design of stream structures, fish habitat improvements, and stream restoration, especially when the concept of natural channel design is applied. Developing a consistent reproducible means of determining bankful stage is important for the successful application of all these techniques. As we've seen, bankful stage is the level at which water just begins to flow onto the floodplain. So to determine bankful level in most stream types, it's important to be able to identify the active floodplain. What is a floodplain? It's a relatively flat depositional feature adjacent to the river that's formed by the river in current climatic and hydrologic conditions. The floodplain is one of the most dynamic geomorphic features due to its interrelationship with the system of processes that form stream channels. On average, bankful flows occur about every year and a half to two years. Therefore, there is approximately a 65 to 70 percent chance of observing bankful flow in a single year. In addition, an obvious floodplain may be difficult to discern in some stream types. So determining bankful stage is an exercise in approximation, but there are several key steps and techniques that can be used to consistently identify the bankful level of a river or stream. The first step in a systematic approach to bankful determination is to refer to any existing data that may be available for a region or specific river. 
Information, including regional curves and gauging station data, can be used to determine where to look for the floodplain and bankful stage. A second step is to select a representative reach of the river in the field and locate the river's floodplain to determine a consistent bankful elevation along the reach. Once a consistent bankful elevation has been identified, cross sections can be established along the reach and various measurements and surveys can be performed. In many places, the, flood, the bank hole stage is not easy to identify in the field. Here it is very clear. But in any event, the uh, first thing that one ought to do is to look at the regional curves and see where to expect to see the floodplain. Here at, the, at this point, with a drainage area of 552 square miles, you can look at the graph that shows the depth of water, the mean depth at bank full discharge for 552 square miles. And looking at the book, we can see that it, we can look for the floodplain at about 3.7 feet. That's about where we should start looking then for the floodplain. And indeed, if you look over there on the, on the left bank, that is to our right, you can see that the, that level stands just about that distance above the, of the, above the bed of the stream, because the bed of the stream is only about a foot deep here at this stage. In many stream types, especially steep gradient streams, a floodplain may be difficult to locate. It may be intermittent or obscured by vegetation. In these cases, regional curves, such as those found in the book Water in Environmental Planning, can be very beneficial in determining where to look for evidence of the floodplain and bankful stage. If data is not available for your area, it can be very beneficial to build a database of your own. A variety of resources provide details of measurements needed to develop regional curves. Some of these resources include Rocky Mountain Forest and Range Experiment Station, General Technical Report Number RM245, Stream Channel Reference Sites, an Illustrated Guide to Field Techniques, and the books Water in Environmental Planning and a view of the river by Luna Leopold. Here at uh, Little Granite Creek, not far from Bondurant, Wyoming, we have a stream that is typical of uh, bouldery streams of the B3 type, in which the floodplain is not at all obvious and is represented only by very small flat areas on the stream margin. And therefore, it is um, very useful to us to start out with uh, glancing at the regional curve to see where we should be looking uh, for, the, for the partially developed uh, uh, floodplain flats. Since the, as we know the drainage area, we can look up in the, uh, in the graph and see that we should be looking for a level which is approximately between 1.7 and and two feet above the uh, above be the bed of the stream, and that at least uh, tells you where where you begin. Now, since we know uh, what we're looking for, we're looking for a depositional zone, a depositional feature, perhaps not complete, but uh, floodplain deposits, those very small and perhaps very narrow, tend to be at a relatively uniform elevation and relatively flat, but. Uh, it, the main thing is it's a depositional feature, as we've seen before. And therefore, you can see, and we will show uh, shortly, that there are little places where we can say, yes, this is about two feet above, and it's flat. And furthermore, it's depositional. Once available data has been evaluated, it's time to select a representative reach in the field and locate the floodplain's depositional features. In the field, it's important to be able to identify and distinguish common geomorphic features, including abandoned floodplains, or terraces, that are typically found on certain stream types. We're here on the Rio Blanco. This is a C3, or a meandering channel with a well-developed floodplain on a small cobble substrate. It's important to understand, when you're working with bankful and bankful determinations, to understand the features in the valley so that we don't misinterpret what's a floodplain, what's a low terrace, 
a middle or a high terrace. This is a particularly good location to point out all three of the Holocene terraces present in North America are observed from this location. Off to my far left, we'll see the high terrace. This stands at approximately 12 feet above the river. In front of me here in the four view is the eight foot terrace. And that'll vary from seven to eight feet in this location. Back off to the right here, we have the four foot terrace. Then we have the active floodplain that is connected with this particular cross section that we've discussed. In identifying bankful level, it's important to select a representative reach of the river that is relatively straight. Using available data as a guide, you would then locate depositional features that are at a uniform elevation along the reach. Multiple cross sections can then be established to serve as a basis for estimating or calculating bankful discharge. The other thing is that most single cross section is going to be completely satisfactory and we urge strongly that you that the observer does not rely only on one cross section but actually goes along the stream for at least 20 widths flagging the places where he thinks he finds depositional features or other features that he can use but primarily he's looking for small areas of uh, a depositional feature flat on top that represent the uh, the incipient uh, floodplain discussing procedures again the first thing that we would do would choose the representative reach which is a reach of channel about 20 channel widths in length along one or both banks we would walk along and try to find these depositional features that are the floodplain we would mark these and then rather than to use a single cross section as a measure of bank full stage we would run our survey long profiles down the stream bed, one or both edges of water, and one or both floodplains, and where the lone profile of the floodplain intersects the staff gauge or other reference point, that's the gauge height at bank full stage. Looking at the regional curves in water and environmental planning for 22 square miles, which is the drainage area of Little Granite Creek, bank full depth is 1.7 feet. When we looked at the staff gauge, Bank full stage was 1.4 feet above the present water surface. The present mean depth is 0.3 feet. The 1.4 and the 0.3 totals to 1.7. So in this case, bank full depth at Lower Granite Creek is right on with the regional curves in water and environmental planning. Uh, again, it's an indication that uh, a little bit of homework by looking at the regional curves may help direct one to find the right surface in the, in the field. In other words, we're, we're quite sure that uh, we can hone in on a floodplain surface and not an abandoned floodplain, or by definition, a terrace. While emphasis is on identifying the elevation of the depositional floodplain features, there are a variety of supplementary indicators that may be helpful in determining the bankful stage on various stream types. These include the presence and height of certain depositional features, especially point bars, which define the lowest possible level for bankful stage. The slope of the bank, or more specifically, a break in the slope of the bank from a horizontal depositional surface to the vertical slope making up the bank. Vegetation, especially the lower limit of certain perennial species. Remember, the best overall indicator of bankful stage is the flat depositional surface of the active floodplain. So let's look at some of these supplementary indicators and see how they can be used to determine bankful stage in the field whenever floodplains are absent or poorly expressed. We're located here on White Creek, which is a tributary to the Blanco River, in a small B4 type system. We've uh, marked some indicators of bank fall stage. You will notice <clears throat> on my left the beginnings of a depositional feature, which is what passes for a point bar in these types of systems. The 
primary indicator will be the top of this point bar in this area. And again, this particular feature is commensurate with the line of alder vegetation that you see going downstream. There is one and another and so forth into the background. The indicators are a little less distinct on the left bank, although we have a break and slope. At this point, again, vegetation in the form of shrub at this point and a break and slope here. We've marked the cross section just below me. The lower line is the bankful stage. And you can see tying into the top of the point bar or depositional feature and the location of the alder vegetation. Looking at twice the maximum depth of the bankful stage, we can approximate the stage of the <coughs> flood prone area for this particular stream type, which is indicated by the upper line. The elevations for bankful stage on this particular reach come from the consistent indicators on the right bank, which will be the top of the depositional feature and the base of the alder vegetation. Here we have a depositional feature, which is a small point bar. At the top of the point bar, we'll notice a small break and slope. So along the point bar, a line of alder vegetation. These uh, three features combine to give us an average stage of the normal high water flow regime that uh, is maintaining this particular shape and dimensions of White Creek. Here again, we see a representative reach on White Creek at low flow levels. Here's the same reach at Bankful stage. Note that the water level at Bankful has risen to a point that is right at the break in slope. It's risen over the depositional feature that was visible at low water and is just beginning to flow onto the floodplain denoted by the line of alder vegetation. Here we see an upstream view of White Creek at low water. Bankful indicators, including the depositional floodplain features and vegetation line, are visible. Here's the same reach at Bankful stage. We can see that the water is right at the base of the alders and is just beginning to flow onto the floodplain, which lies above the break and slope, and change in depositional surface visible at low water. Good morning. We're standing here in O'Neill Creek which is a tributary to the Piedra River, located about 15 miles northwest of Pagosa Springs. This stream type is an E-type system, and we've located the uh, bankful stage in this rather straight reach. The bankful indicators here are typically uh, the top of bank feature, the edge of the vegetation. One has to be a little careful on these sites to notice the bank slumping that may occur, which would tend to lower the uh, top of bank feature, the break and slope, and uh, perhaps uh, give you a low reading. Here's a point uh, very near the cross section we selected where we trim the grass back to see if we can identify the uh, physical features of the bank. 
Then one can note that the bank comes down and all of a sudden there's a break in slope. And again, uh, noting if undue bank slumping has occurred, we would locate bank flow stage at about this elevation where the pink flag is. And one would do this up and down the channel to verify the stage elevation. That is, when the flags tend to be all at the same relative elevation above the water surface, then one can rest assured that you're at or near the bankful stage, which represents the upper level of the uh, normal or average high water flows. At this point, we'll clear away some of this grass. And note again, we have the same feature, the uh, gradual slope and then a break in slope. And it's interesting to note here that portions of the vegetation have, uh, along with the sod, slumped into the channel. One would not select this level for a bank flow or this level. One would go back to this point here, indicated by the pink flag. In many cases, gauging sites and gauge data can be used to locate bankful stage in the field. They can also be utilized to verify the accuracy of bankful determination. Okay, we're at the uh, Green River at Warren Bridge. It's one of our long-term gauging stations. We've been here for, I believe, 62 years. Drainage area, 468 square miles. Bankful discharge, about 2,600 CFS. This is a good instance where we should mention that the Geological Survey maintains 7,000 active stream gauging stations, about twice that many inactive stations, so a total of about 20,000 stream gauging sites where we can determine the stage discharge rating, the flow frequency, flow duration, uh, the stage discharge relation so that we can, and, and from the summary of discharge measurements to 9207, form 9207, we can develop our own curves of hydraulic geometry. If we uh, review our definition of uh, bankful discharge, bankful discharge is defined as when water just begins to overtop the floodplain. The floodplain is defined as relatively flat surface adjacent to the river, constructed by the river and being reconstructed by the river in its present climatic and hydrologic regimes and overtopped on the average about once every year and a half. Therefore, when we're defining <coughs> bank full stage, we're defining the level of the floodplain. Perhaps the best definition of floodplain here is the rather extensive bit to our right as we look, as we look uh, some 200 yards upstream. If we look in the foreground, the hydrologist has lowered the wire weight at the gauging station to a gauge height of 4.4, which is bank full. The hydrologist has also uh, attached a level line from the bottom of the, uh, the pink weight to the grassy floodplain surface at the uh, base of the wire weight gauge. And you can see that the gauge height of 4.4 bank full coincides with the grassy uh, depositional surface at the base of the, uh, at the, base of the uh, wire weight gauge. Although in the background the floodplain is more extensive, in the foreground where the hydrologist is, the floodplain is only a remnant. So frequently we're looking for small pieces or remnants of the floodplain. It's, it's a, this is another good example of where vegetation may not be a, a, a good indicator of bank full stage. If we notice the grass goes all the way to the water surface, the elevation of the willows are at uh, various elevations. They're not consistent, so we can't define floodplain by uh, the elevation of the willows or uh, the, the edge of the grass. The stain line on the rocks are not at a consistent elevation. So here we're looking for remnants of a depositional surface, uh, <clears throat> which again is the, uh, is the grassy surface at the base of the uh, wire weight gauge. As we have demonstrated, finding bankful stage in the field can be difficult. Stream types and indicators vary by geographical location and the identification of bankful stage requires a rigorous and complete observation process. 
a lack of consistency by a single person or among several people can therefore yield poor results. To assure consistent identification of bankful stage, keep the following in mind as you head for the field. The best indicator of bankful stage is the relatively flat depositional surface located adjacent to many stream channels. This surface is the stream's floodplain. Always strive to identify the elevation of the floodplain, regardless of the type of stream, since this is the most consistent feature associated with bankful stage. Recognize the geomorphic context of the channel. Look for terraces, and remember that most streams have three distinct terraces. The low terrace at approximately two to four feet above the present stream. The middle terrace at approximately seven to ten feet above the present stream and a high terrace at approximately 20 to 30 feet above the present stream. Be especially careful not to confuse the level of the low terrace with that of the floodplain. Likewise, don't be fooled by recent channel disturbance and incised channels. Recently disturbed systems may give false indications of bankful. Channel incision or severe downcutting may result from catastrophic flooding or long-term abusive management practices. In these channels, the newly building floodplain within the incised channel is the bankful stage, not the top of the original stream bank. By definition, the floodplain is the relatively flat surface adjacent to the river constructed by the river in its present climatic and hydrologic regimes. Therefore, the bankful level is the one building within the confines of the incised channel. Recognize that floodplains do not exist along all stream channels. They are most prominent along low gradient meandering streams. In progressively steeper channels, floodplains may be intermittent on alternate sides of meander bends or they may be completely absent. Steep, confined streams often lack recognizable floodplains altogether. In these channels, other indicators may serve as surrogates to identify bankful stage. Use them with care. Remember, they need to be confirmed for your local area to verify that the level of these surrogates is the same as that of the primary bankful indicator, which is the level of the depositional surface of the floodplain. One way to do this is to observe various channel types within a watershed as they flow at or near bankful stage. By doing so, it's possible to verify that the inundation level of the indicators occurs simultaneously with the inundation of the floodplain feature. Bankful discharge is an important channel characteristic which largely controls the form of alluvial channels. While many channel characteristics, such as the edge of the water or the depth of the channel, are easy to observe and measure, bankful discharge and the boundaries of the active floodplain are harder to define. Consistent identification of bankful stage is possible if you keep in mind the basic concept that bankful stage and the level of the floodplain are one and the same. The best and most consistent identifier of the floodplain is the level of the flat depositional surfaces found adjacent to many streams.